Francesca Cane, as lecturer, European Teacher Education Boundary Crossings. Francesca, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to uh, try and give you a hybrid perspective, which comes from my training, from my experiences, and from my background, because I consider myself lucky that I've had experiences as a teacher, so on the front line, as a teacher educator, uh, as a researcher on European teacher education, and also as a consultant for the European Commission on the policy level. So uh, while I was trying to assemble this presentation, and I really have to thank Gabor Alas and the, organizing, and the organizers and the organizing committee because they gave me free way to decide the angle to give to my presentation. And while I was trying to assemble my ideas, I kept jumping from one perspective to another. So I, I found this uh, metaphor, this image of the spiral, this fractal image, this fractal metaphor, to try and give a meaning and a consistency to my presentation. So first of all, I have to say that I have a feeling of deja vu. Uh, being here in Utvus Lorand University again after some years, um, because I was here uh, in 2009, I think, uh, to talk about European teacher education and to talk about uh, European Master for European Teacher Training uh, called EMET. Uh, and I was talking about a constellation of eight universities involved. Um, I was talking, and there were some people that are still here today in the room. Uh, and uh, among the uh, universities involved in this constellation of universities, there was, there was also, uh, it was Laurent University, and there was also Innsbruck's uh, Pedagogical uh, Academy. Um, and uh, uh, the logo that we chose uh, was um, uh, connected to this metaphor of the constellation of universities because we thought about uh, the constellation of the Sagittarius, the center, and so uh, the mythological figure of the center Chiron, uh, wise mentor and educator of heroes and gods came to our minds. Uh, so that's why there is the little logo with the center uh, at the bottom. And uh, I must say that they were interesting times because um, we felt we were a little like pioneers uh, because uh, we were starting building the foundations of a common understanding of European teacher education. And we had heated discussions about what competencies were needed for European teachers. And uh, I think that um, building a common discourse on teacher professionalism was fascinating at that time. Um, and working on designing and developing a curriculum for a giant master of teacher education was really tough. Um, the Bologna process was uh, still on the way. Um, and the European document on improving the quality of teacher education had just been published, so we were taking stock of it. And, uh, but again, you know that, you know well, that in the Bologna process, especially at that time, uh, teacher education, initial teacher education, felt a little like the odd one out and the misfits within the Bologna process too many ties with national cultures and regulations. Uh, so uh, again, it, they were tough times and interesting times at the same time. Um, and we felt like we were walking the tightrope, um, trying to reconcile different curriculum traditions. And there were heated, really heated discussions in work meetings, and I'm sure that this rings a bell with the editor, within the editor consortium, 
about the common ground across teacher education systems, uh, policies and practices. And uh, um, there was a lot of uh, talking about obstacles and constraints. Um, and I still remember that the external evaluator that uh, came to the meetings uh, told me once that he was surprised that uh, the participants in the working group meetings talked a, 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 a great deal, a lot, about uh, what they did in their context, what uh, happened in their own uh, um, little local uh, institution or uh, setting, and they didn't manage to make the leap of imagination to talk and think European. So we were still at the very beginnings. And um, I think that um, we, uh, we had heated debates, especially about uh, uh, teacher competencies. By now they are agreed as a background and as learning outcomes of uh, teacher education on a European level, but then I remember that there was a great deal of resistance and on the academic level in some institutions uh, there was still a rooted um, habit uh, uh, about thinking in terms of knowledge and content. So when we were developing the curriculum module, modules uh, and modular structure, there was a great deal of uh, contrasts within uh, the working group. And um, I think that what was really fascinating, especially at the beginning, was uh, building a common discourse. Uh, so we felt, uh, as I said before, like pioneers. And we felt like we were on a hermeneutic journey of interpretations, um, translating, translating all the time, trying to build a common uh, discourse, a common glossary, as uh, Michael was saying before. Um, and, uh, well, we took a long time to uh, agree on what we really meant, so to be sure that we meant what we really, we really meant. Um, and uh, very often, especially at the beginning, we were lost in translation <laughs> because uh, we thought that we were talking about the same practice or the same structure, the same role, but actually we were meaning different uh, things. Um, so that was interesting, I think. Um, and um, I think that uh, if you consider that uh, teacher education, as also the previous speakers were saying, uh, is characterized by complexity, according to some uh, writers and researchers, uh, it's the curse of complexity. Complexity squared or cubed, uh, because it is an open system, uh, it is not bound and contained in itself, but of course, as we were saying, uh, it is defined and characterized by many uh, multiple uh, contexts. Um, and I think that, um, uh, well, you can see from the complexity of this map, of this mind map, uh, what I'm trying to say. Um, so uh, when you talk about uh, initial teacher education, you cannot help uh, considering that it is connected to uh, the governance and quality assurance system of the national context, you cannot help thinking, as uh, Thomas was saying before, that it has to do with teacher status and attractiveness uh, uh, on a professional level. It has to do with selection filters, with entry requirements. Um, if we talk in particular about uh, uh, building a um, European teacher education curriculum, by now, uh, it's uh, commonly agreed that there is a building consensus on uh, teacher competencies, uh, teacher competence frameworks as broken down into knowledge, skills, and attitudes and values. And by now, it is widely acknowledged that uh, there are some key requirements uh, in uh, terms of teacher competencies. Uh, here I have listed some. Uh, so critical thinking, reflection, I'm not saying anything new, I know that by now uh, it's agreed. Uh, learning to learn, 
um, class teaching skills, uh, problem solving, dealing with diversity, communication competencies, research, and the application of ICT to, teach, to teaching and learning. Um, but uh, again, in order to build uh, an effective teacher education curriculum, uh, of course you have to consider uh, the issue of teacher learning. And by now there are burgeoning studies on how teachers learn. Um, and uh, so uh, the importance of workplace learning and of experiential learning in situation in the realities of the classroom is, I think, uh, clear. Um, so again, the importance of school practice stands out. So uh, how to uh, design it uh, in a consistent way in effective partnerships between schools and universities. Uh, when I say effective partnerships, I consider uh, the issue of co-designing uh, the curriculum, uh, the structure of teaching practice, um, uh, joint delivery, joint steering, joint assessment and evaluation and monitoring. Um, so, uh, and we cannot help considering the link with schools as before we were saying, schools as collaborative learning communities um, in order to uh, give the future teachers uh, the suitable context in order, the suitable catalyst for uh, learning for starting their learning journey. Um, so all these aspects are all interconnected and uh, teacher education is heavily context bound and is liable to institutional control and to state control. And in a way, again, coming back to the mythological figure of the center, I think that teacher education is of course a hybrid creature. Um, and uh, um, I think that, anyway, I would like to start from uh, what is, what matters most, so learners and pupils. And in a recent study by Fulang and Langworthy uh, um, that was uh, outlining the characteristics of deep learning, um, we can say definitely what deep learning is not. So. Uh, deep learning is not lecturing. Oops, that's what we are here now. So I hope that your brains are not flatlining after <laughs> three presentations. Um, but deep learning means uh, developing uh, in students, in pupils, uh, the competencies and dispositions and attitudes that they need as global citizens. Uh, so creativity, connections, um, making connections, being uh, collaborative problem solvers, and above all, uh, meaningful learning is deep learning. So uh, studies point out that uh, uh, learners feel motivated and find the learning that they are doing meaningful, especially if they feel that they are involved in something bigger than themselves if they are feeling that they are doing something that matters, that makes a difference, that is connected to, re to the real world, that, is, that it is not pretending or faking. Um, so that is the heart of the matter. So um, I think that uh, when we talk about uh, teacher education and European teacher education or global teacher education, if you want, we have to start from that. Uh, so considering uh, that now, uh, as it often happens, uh, education systems and schools um, develop much more slowly than the pace of the world and of society. Um, and so uh, there, there needs to be an acceleration. So catching up with the reality of uh, the pupils and the students' minds and worlds and ways of uh, thinking, of learning, of connecting and of making meaning of the world that is around them. Um, so I really think that this is the heart of the matter. So how to teach for deep learning? So how uh, to uh, reinvigorate, we could say, 
um, bored pupils, uh, disaffected teachers always. So how to motivate, how to spark enthusiasm, energy, uh, and commitment to ongoing learning. Um, so in the recent study that I was uh, mentioning before, there are some suggestions uh, about new pedagogies for deep learning. So um, it seems to require, um, above all, uh, building new learning partnerships between students and teachers uh, who should embark on this learning journey together uh, learning from each other and uh, we, with each other. Um, it means uh, tapping on the precious resource of peer teaching and peer learning. Um, and it means uh, fostering uh, pupils' autonomy and uh, leadership about their own learning. Uh, but there's the rub. Uh, this implies teachers reimagining their roles. Uh, so, again, a leap of the imagination. Uh, the role becomes not less important, but even more crucial. Um, and it's important to avoid the dysfunctional ends of giving uh, students too much autonomy uh, or controlling their learning too much. So I think that the role of the teacher uh, for in these new pedagogies and for deep learning uh, is crucial in uh, giving structure to the deep learning of students and uh, um, I think uh, giving meaning uh, and monitoring, uh, monitoring and ongoing evaluation of the deep learning that is uh, taking place. And of course we are talking about global citizens and global citizenship requires creativity, but uh, paradoxically, um, creativity um, requires collaboration. Uh, it requires, of course, uh, a solid, uh, strong, and deep content mastery, so the mastery of knowledge, but it requires also the attitudes uh, to collaboration. Uh, it requires also um, attitudes um, that maybe now are uh, starting to be considered as more and more important, such as persistence. So the idea that creativity and imagination uh, are not the result of inspiration, but come from deep, sustained, hard work every day. Uh, and so um, character education becomes more and more important so, important. so the importance of persistence, of grit, of not giving up in, for, in front of difficulties and hardships. Um, so all these aspects need to be taken into account. And um, I think that um, the role of technology is also, uh, should also be revisited from this point of view. Um, because uh, I think that um, new technology uh, so far, now we have witnessed for two, three decades, two decades, um, has mostly been used both in schools, in higher education and teacher education simply as an added layer, so as an add-on. Um, and so uh, that's why very often uh, its effectiveness for deep learning and effective teaching has been not fully exploited. Um, what I mean is that technology uh, should become an integrated part uh, uh, of the learning, of the process of deep learning. Um, and um, I'm going to explain it uh, in a minute. Um, but uh, coming back to the role of teachers uh, in uh, uh, fostering and supporting uh, uh, students' learning, um, I think that uh, to use a metaphor uh, coming from mining, uh, human resources are often buried deep, so they are not on the surface. So in order to discover the rich seam uh, of students' pupils' potential, 
uh, teachers uh, should create uh, and organize and structure suitable learning opportunities for deep learning. Um, so uh, creating the uh, circumstances and the conditions for students to find in a way themselves because often they uh, I often I have often had this conversation with pupils um, I, I didn't really know they say I didn't really know what was my calling what I wanted to do in life I didn't really understand what I was good at, so I think that this is the task of teachers. So uh, providing uh, the, greatest, the greatest possible variety of deep learning opportunities in order to allow students uh, to find out what, is, what are their talents and how to develop their potential. Um, so, we can use a lot of different metaphors to define teachers according to uh, what we think is most important in the roles uh, and also to our particular cultures about teaching and schooling. We can call them caring mentors that support and take care of students in a global way. Uh, we can consider them farmers. This is the Dewey old uh, formula, uh, cultivating students' uh, potential. We can call them also alchemists. Uh, Sir Ken Robinson recently uh, defined the teachers as alchemists uh, who are mixing and matching uh, tools, resources, uh, knowledge in order to uh, produce reactions reactions in uh, pupils. We can call them as scaffolders, so creating structures to scaffold uh, teachers. Learning. We can call them, I really like the metaphor of the teacher as a welder, uh, because it gives the idea of the sparks that are created by teachers, uh, the sparks of energy, the sparks of excitement, uh, uh, but at the same time, welders, what do welders do? They connect. So I think that teachers should uh, connect uh, a lot, connect uh, different uh, experiences, connect uh, different learning tasks, give a meaning and a structure uh, in order to create a consistent whole. But uh, from this point of view, we are still in a pioneering stage and there are a lot of challenges. Uh, if we uh, prioritize deep learning, and if we prioritize new pedagogies, one of the challenges uh, is a consistent assessment. Uh, assessment that is consistent with the aims and with the tasks that we are uh, giving learners. And uh, there is one hurdle, and uh, uh, it can be uh, posed by curriculum standards and standardized assessments. And as I said before, also the use of technology for delivery rather than for knowledge creation. Um, and last but not least, uh, system elements, uh, so governance uh, and uh, regulations uh, that can be significant and also institutional uh, features that can be significant barriers to change. Um, so uh, how to assess deep learning? we are still thinking about it um, from a certain point of view. Um, so the shift of focus should be from assessing content reproduction to assessing the mastery of the learning process and uh, finding a consistent and uh, um, acceptable, uh, adequate ways of assessing students' key future skills and among them we should consider the famous six C's of 21st century skills, among which there is certainly communication, creativity, um, with many others. Um, so I think that, uh, as you can see from the big rock of curricular content that uh, is huge and massive, and that is the proportion of assessment uh, 
uh, that is currently, according to studies, dedicated to uh, content, whereas uh, the small rock that you can see at the bottom is the assessment, the practices of assessment of deep learning that are currently going on. Um, so I think that um, we were talking before about uh, the use of technology. Um, so uh, I think that uh, um, teaching for deep learning entails uh, an ongoing developing process, both in teachers and in pupils. Um, so, as I said before, teachers and pupils are in the learning, on the learning journey together, learning from each other and which, with each other. Um, and if you can see the, the bottom, the, the, the top continuum is about pedagogy. Um, so, uh, on this development journey, um, new pedagogies should go from teacher control to allowing learner autonomy, greater and greater learning autonomy. So uh, gradually letting students be in the driving seat of their learning, so mastering their own learning. And of course it cannot help, uh, it cannot happen all of a sudden, so it must be carefully prepared, structured and monitored and assessed and adjusted on the way. Um, and the same thing can be said about the second uh, continuum arrow that is about tasks and assessment. So the, the learning journey should go, the development should go from focusing on content mastery uh, to passing through new knowledge creation and uh, getting to learning mastery. Uh, and the two bottom arrow continua uh, are connected to the use of technology by teachers and by students. So uh, the shift of focus should gradually move from content delivery and use of technology uh, to creating tools, using tools to create new knowledge and uh, uh, with these uh, tools to create new knowledge uh, do real things in the real world and uh, an ubiquitous uh, use of technology can really pull down the barriers of school walls and uh, enable and spark and motivate uh, teachers and learners to uh, learn 24-7. So uh, coming back to teacher education, and I am sorry if I, if I was a bit passionate about this, but I really believe that there needs to be a culture shift. And uh, often we pay lip service to these ideas, but uh, uh, I think that the gap between uh, theory and practice is still great. Uh, so in teacher education, uh, there is the call uh, not only for a retooling, so finding new uh, tools, but a renaissance, so a cultural change. Um, because we are working in a scenario that is changing at breakneck speed. So we definitely need to uh, catch up and to accelerate. And we are working definitely in troubled waters uh, on the global level. Um, because uh, we have global pressures on education systems uh, towards convergence, uh, transparency um, of qualifications, of learning outcomes. Uh, but uh, on the local level, on the national and local level, uh, there are complex interactions and mechanisms uh, so there is adaptation, but sometimes there is also resistance. But it's interesting because uh, local and hybrid translations uh, can result from the interplay between uh, global pressures and uh, uh, local traditions and cultures. And um, I would like to uh, consider uh, coming back to my fractal metaphor that you can see at the beginning, that you could see at the beginning, I would like to uh, have a view of uh, teacher education systems uh, as ecosystem systems. And uh, I'm, um, I'm 
using, I'm uh, deploying um, the perspective of cultural historical activity theory uh, in order to consider what is happening and how we can harness uh, the dynamics of what is happening um, as an interplay of global pressures and local uh, developments. Um, so I, uh, I would like to uh, give you a perspective of uh, teacher education systems as uh, complex social cultural practices that have a shared object, and this shared object is uh, the profile of the teacher. So, uh, teacher competencies uh, and skill, as knowledge, skills, and values as a result of teacher education. What is interesting if we consider uh, teacher education systems as ecosystems from this activity theory perspective, in my opinion, uh, is that um, activity systems are described um, in the literature as characterized by ongoing change and transformation. Uh, between uh, the elements of the system and within each element of the system. And uh, uh, that is uh, what characterizes uh, activity systems, so a constant change. And uh, uh, these interactions and tensions and contradictions uh, can be um, uh, interesting uh, stimuli for uh, developments. Um, so um, here I am referring to uh, the work that I did uh, during my PhD um, where I carried out a comparative study on four uh, teacher education um, contexts. Um, and I uh, found, I actually found a common ground uh, um, across the variety of regulations and of features um, that can be explained with this, uh, uh, with this uh, uh, picture, with this uh, visual uh, representation. Um, so if we consider uh, the activity system of teacher education um, as uh, stimulated and catalyzed to, towards change uh, by an external element, that is, in this case, the European dimension of teacher education, that, is in a, that can be read as a global um, force. Um, the European dimension of education and teacher education can be considered as a catalyst for uh, you know, um, strengthening the contradictions and the tensions within the activity system and generating interesting changes and developments. So I'm going quickly to describe each element of uh, the system. Uh, you can see the, the little arrows because all the elements are in, always interconnected and interacting. Uh, so the subject in this case is teacher education providers. Um, uh, and uh, they are engaged in uh, uh, planning and uh, designing the teacher education curriculum that can be considered as a cultural artifact because it is uh, steeped in a national uh, and ca local culture of uh, education and uh, schooling. Um, and uh, um, the curriculum uh, is uh, characterized by program pedagogies, uh, settings, um, and assessment uh, uh, processes. So that would be the rules of the activity system. And uh, of course, it is set uh, within a teacher education community. Uh, that is characterized by roles, uh, so the roles, for example, of teacher educators in schools and uh, universities. And the common object of the activity system is uh, the preparation of future teachers uh, and the outcome, the professional profile. Um, and there, are, there can be, well, I found contra common contradictions and tensions within each element of the system. Just to give you an example, um, for example, teacher education providers can display the tension between their academic and professional mission. Uh, or future teachers, especially uh, secondary school teachers, can be prevailingly considered as subject specialists or all-around professionals. 
Um, another important aspect of tension and contradictions is uh, collaboration cultures within the teacher education community. So whether there is the habit uh, towards colla about collaboration, there is a habit of collaboration, or whether there is uh, a habit of independence and autonomy. Um, so um, coming to the heart of the matter, so uh, the common outcome, so the profile of the teacher, um, of course there are wide cultural variations about teacher competence frameworks in Europe. Uh, what uh, can be found and uh, um, uh, some studies recently pointed it out is that by now there is a common patina of policy discourse uh, across Europe about uh, teacher competencies. So they pop up in every policy document, but uh, again there, is, there can be a wide gap between uh, policy discourse and policy practice. So what really happens in teacher education contexts and uh, uh, in school contexts. Um, and uh, comparatively speaking, uh, there can be a wide variety, as also Thomas was saying before, between uh, the degree of development of teacher competence frameworks, the uses they are um, uh, employed for, um, whether they are used only in initial teacher education or along the continuum, and uh, whether they are connected in an organic way with accountability and governance cultures. And last but not least, uh, policy implementation strategies. Um, and from this point of view, uh, you can see uh, that uh, um, uh, teacher education is uh, a pivotal element. So uh, developing teacher competencies that you can see is the square that is to the left there. Um, developing teacher competencies through teacher education and CPD uh, is, uh, has a pivotal role um, in the scenario of policy implementation. Uh, so even if there is policy, po political commitment to reforms, uh, talking about the implementation of uh, teacher competence frameworks, and even if there are implementation capacities, so effective strategies, um, then uh, what, is, what, is, what really matters is how uh, teacher education and the development of teacher competencies within teacher education is connected to the rest of the system. So, uh, just to give you an example also how it is connected to school practices. Uh, so, shaping school practices uh, by innovation and support and uh, school and leadership development. Uh, so, only uh, if there are, there are effective synergies between all these elements can we uh, trust that there will be um, the development of effective reform and effective competence-based education. Uh, so how to uh, find uh, some landmarks and bearings uh, in this chaotic scenario uh, changing at breakneck speed? Um, I think that for sure by now uh, we agree that teacher professional learning should happen in real school contexts, and that the pivotal role of teacher educators is uh, by now uh, given for granted. Um, the importance of reflection and feedback and sustained professional dialogue with uh, peers and with expert teacher educators and mentors, and the consistency of teacher competence assessment uh, uh, across contexts, uh, roles, and stages of the teacher's career. Uh, and uh, the importance of uh, effective school-university partnerships uh, with a two-way flow of expertise uh, and uh, uh, exchange of experiences uh, between these two worlds that too often are uh, separated. Uh, for the creation of knowledge and for research development. Uh, um, and as a true-born Venetian, uh, in my experience, bridges are key, 
elements for life, for communication and for connection. And I think that's one of the roles of teachers, of teacher education and teacher educators is bridging and creating links and connections. Um, and um, I think that across the wide variety of uh, cultures of teaching, schooling and teacher education, uh, there are some interesting elements that can be starting points for ongoing dialogue uh, and for reciprocal learning uh, as boundary objects. So as objects, uh, concepts that uh, can be found in different cultures of teacher education that can have variations of meanings but can be interesting starting points for dialogue and learning. And uh, surely uh, cooperation and collaboration uh, represent uh, one element, reflection, research, and last but not least, values. Uh, can we talk about European values that are shared? Uh, so democracy, tolerance, for example, uh, and how to uh, go about developing them in pupils and within teacher uh, education. Um, and uh, uh, I'd like to uh, conclude by referring again to uh, a fractal metaphor. Um, during my PhD I fell in love with fractals that come from mathematics and, but I think that uh, if you consider how they exist in the natural world, it's fascinating um, how they can be compared and connected also to describe uh, education ecosystems. Uh, because uh, fractals reflect, uh, as opposed to fractal geometry, as opposed to Euclidean geometry, that is regular. Fractal geometry instead uh, underlines the flexibility and irregularity of living entity and natural forms uh, in complex and interdependent uh, living systems and structures. So if uh, within this fractal metaphor the activity systems of teacher education, of school contexts and of policy making uh, can interact communicate and create knowledge and meaning together, I think that there is hope and that's why we are here. And um, I think that we are on this learning journey together and as Machado would say, there is traveler, there is no path, so we made the path by walking. That's all for me. Thank you.